You just bought a shiny new switcher for your live stream. You're ready to get it set up and use it on a Sunday morning, but you just realized you have no way to actually control it. You look online at some control surfaces, but they're more expensive than the switcher itself, so that just seems crazy. Well, I have the solution for you. It's a free piece of software called Companion, and it lets you control your switcher and other parts of your live stream using a simple little piece of hardware called a Stream Deck. Let's take a look at it. Companion is a free and open source piece of software that allows you to control lots of devices and software on your network. Now, a Stream Deck is a small device that has a bunch of buttons on it. These buttons can be programmed to control all sorts of things using the default Stream Deck software. But when combined with Companion, it can control devices all across your network and even over the internet, depending on what they are. We can configure all of that and more in Companion so that it can be their central hub for running your live stream and other parts of your church production. There are a few different sizes of Stream Decks depending on how many buttons you need, etc. But they all range from about 100 bucks to $250 on the high end. When compared with a traditional video switcher control surface, it's a bargain. So for those budget church live streamers out there, this is honestly the way you need to go. Great, so now that you know what they are, how do we actually get them set up? Well, I'm going to show you. Let's take a look at my computer here. So if you just Google up Companion, you can find it here. It's made by Bitfocus. We go down here to the download button. We just click on that and it'll take us to this other page. You do actually need to create a user account and sign in. So I'm just going to log in real quick. So now that we're logged in here, you can see the different offerings that they have, but we'll go up here to regular Companion. You go ahead and click on this, go ahead and click download, take you to this page where you can actually choose the version that you want. I would recommend staying away from a beta or experimental build because it's definitely going to have a few more bugs than just the standard stable build. So again, we just want standard companion. We'll click on this. Most of you will either be Windows or a Mac, and then on a Mac, you just need to pick if you're using one of the new Apple Silicon, so M1 or M2, or one of the older Intel machines. Once you click on that, you'll actually get the download started. After you download it, you just run the installer and then it automatically boots up and starts running on your machine. I actually use the version that runs on a Raspberry Pi. Now, if you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, it's a very small microcomputer. Now, if you were running a MacBook or something like that, you don't really want to take your $1,000 computer and only have it do one tiny thing. But for a Raspberry Pi at the price, that's perfect. It also takes up a tiny space on our video cart. It's literally about this big. It's great for running Companion because we just turn it on with the rest of our system and never even think twice about it. Once you have Companion installed, it actually tells you how to access it on your network. You do this using the IP address of the computer that it's running on, along with a specific port number that it tells you. So we can see here, if I go to my Raspberry Pi instance that's running it, it's at our IP address and then a port number, and it loads us up right here into the Companion homepage. So what are we looking at when we're on this page? Well, we can see here there are connections. And according to Companion, a connection is actually a piece of hardware or a software that Companion knows about on your network and can run commands to. So if we look at this, we have two ATEMs, an ATEM Mini, an ATEM Constellation, and then OBS. So I use all three of these in my live stream on a Sunday morning, and I want all of them to be controlled by Companion. So that way, I don't need to jump around between different machines in order to control the different parts of our stream. You can see over here on the side, you can also add more connections. This list is pretty long and they're actually adding more and more every single day. They have everything from ATEMs to other video switchers to soundboards to Spotify to OBS to everything you can basically think of needing to run in a production setting, you can probably run using Companion. That's what makes it so powerful. You can control all sorts of things from one central hub. So let's take a look at how you set it up. So if we go into one of my ATEMs, you can edit what's going on here. Here you can give it a name, you give it the IP address of your ATEM switcher, the model can be auto-detected or you can actually select a specific one, and then it's just got a couple other settings here. Most things that you want to connect are very similar to this and a lot of them come with specific instructions on how to do the rest of the configuration. So if you're lost, look at that or feel free to Google things. Companion also has a Slack chat where a lot of the developers hang out and you can ask good questions if you're ever stuck. So great, we've added some connections. How do we actually get ourselves able to control all of our hardware? Well, we go over here into buttons. Right here, we actually have the layout of a Stream Deck XL. Companion is specifically built to be used with a Stream Deck, but you don't actually need a Stream Deck to use it. You can actually do things straight from Companion inside of your browser. But for the purpose of this, they actually arrange things as if you're using a Stream Deck because that's what most people do. So in here, you can actually have multiple pages of commands. And so as we scroll through here, we can see that I don't use that many pages for our setup on a Sunday morning, but if you have a lot of controls that you need to do, you can configure different pages for that. So let's take a look at page one. 
this is the one that I actually use for all of my main work on a Sunday morning. So if we explore this, down here on the bottom you can see this is actually my video switching row. We have the preview row and the program row here, we have a cut and a fade, and then we have a few extra commands up here, turning the super source on and off, jumping from slides to lyrics or whatever, and then also changing what feed is going out to my stream, whether it's our intro video or our actual program feed. If we look at the second page, we can see I have some other things that I don't need to access as often and I don't want to hit accidentally. So for example, up here we have the buttons to actually start my stream and record on my ATEM Mini. I only want to hit those right at the beginning and I don't want to accidentally hit them later, so I put these on a second page just so it's out of the way. Down here at the bottom, we also have my controls specifically for my A10 Mini. Now I know the A10 Mini has pretty good controls on it, but it's stuffed on a shelf down under here where I can't really access it. So if I ever need to control it directly, I just need to go to the second page of Companion and I can do it straight from there. So how do we actually set up a button? Well, if we go over here and we click one of these empty spaces, we can set it to a regular button or a page up, page down, page number, and those are specific ones used to get to different pages, but we'll just set it up as a regular button for now. We can put whatever button text we want here and it will show up right in here. We can also change a font size. It'll go auto by default, but for example, if we want it to be really tiny or always really big, we can do that as well. You can even actually set an image to be the background of your button. Depending on what it is you're doing, that might make sense. You can align the text anywhere you want. For me, I generally choose center. And then you can actually even change the color of your text or of your background color. So we can set that to red and the background color to white, for example. Then you can go down here into press actions, release actions, and feedback. So press actions are things that actually happen when you push the button down. And release actions are things when you release the button. So let's imagine you have a talkback mic. When you press it down, you want to unmute that channel. And when you let go of it, you want to mute it again. That would be a great use for something like this. Generally speaking, for live streaming, I mostly just use press actions, but it's nice to know that you can do both, and they both have their uses. You can search for things, so ATEM, or you can actually just go to this browse here, and it will pop up the different types of connections that you have, and then you can choose things from there. So for example, my ATEM Mini, let's click into that, and here you can see we get a list of all sorts of actions. Now this can be a bit overwhelming if you don't know specifically what you're looking for, so I encourage you to look through here first, just so you have an idea of what things are called and what they look like in these settings. So recording, start or stop. Awesome, we can just add that and hit done. And then what's going to happen is, if we just hit this button, it will automatically start or stop the recording on our A10 Mini. Now, I know there's already a button for that on the A10 Mini, but this means your A10 Mini can be far away in your tech booth and you can still control it. Now, this button text hide doesn't really make any sense here, so we could say start recording. But that's not super helpful, because if we're already recording, this button is actually going to stop our recording. So what do we do about that? Well, you can go in here to Variables, and to the A10 Mini. So variables are things that will display statuses based on the device that it's controlling. So for example, if we want to show if this is actually recording, we can probably find a variable that shows that. So we can get variables that actually show the recording duration in different formats, or recording time remaining, or probably even the status of our recording. So what you would do is actually copy this, and we could dump this variable into the title of our button text. Now, this isn't really anything useful. It shows the recording remaining based on the hard drive that I have plugged in, but you can see how this could be really powerful. This means you can actually set up certain buttons just to be status indicators rather than actually control things as well. Again, though, this doesn't solve the problem of sometimes this is start and sometimes this is stop. Well, that's where feedback comes into play. Feedback is things that you can control based on the status of certain things. So for example, we can go in here and add feedback. If we go to A10 Mini and we find record, so recording, active or running. So if the record has the specific status, change style of the bank. So if we add this, what that means is when the state is recording, we can actually change the color of this to be red, for example you know, just like you would expect to see on a recorder. You can do all sorts of things with these statuses so that they could respond directly to what's happening on the device you're controlling. That way, you don't have to guess at, are we recording or are we not recording? Now, if this seems like it would be really hard to set up, I get it. It actually is a lot of work to go in and build all of these manually. But there's something called presets that are super useful. Let's show you how they work. But before we do that, I'm going to actually delete this button. So if you just hit the delete button, you can select one that you want to delete and then it will clear. Likewise, you can also copy and move buttons around or wipe the page or do anything to kind of control what's going on in your Stream Deck. Let's go over here and 
select this again. But instead of selecting a regular button, let's select preset. And here we can go to ATEM Mini. You can see here we get a lot of categories that correspond to the ATEM Mini. So let's go to the streaming and recording category. And what about this record button? Let's go ahead and drag that on there. And then let's investigate it. Let's click into it. So right here we can see the button text. It shows record, and then it actually has the variable for record duration. That means that it's gonna show the word record and how much time you've been recording for. If we go into the press actions, we can see, okay, great, yeah, recording, start or stop. That's what we saw before. And if we look at feedback, if it's recording, it's actually gonna set the background to green. And if something else is happening, so for example, if it doesn't know what state it's in, it changes the background to yellow. So all of a sudden, we've built a button that does everything we wanna to do to be able to start and stop recording and show the status of the recording, but with one click, instead of having to configure all of this ourselves. I hope you're starting to see how powerful this is, because what this means is we can build entire banks based on these presets that do exactly what we want it to do. Some of these settings don't even actually have buttons on the ATEM controllers themselves, but instead are down in the settings where it's hard to get to it because you have to do it from a computer. Instead, we can expose those buttons here on our Stream Deck and make things super easy to control. So down here, I've actually built buttons using all of these presets. So if we look at this one, for example, this is my preview for input number one. But you can actually see I have a few different press actions. And let me tell you the reason for that. This is another superpower of Companion. You're able to stack actions on a single button. So on our ATEM constellation that we use for switching, we actually have two mix effects. What that means is we essentially have two switchers in one. Now, the way that we use them is not necessarily traditional, but for the most part, we actually want to send the same inputs and outputs to each mix effect. So anytime I hit the preview button, I actually want that to take effect on both mix effects. Directly on the ATEM constellation, you can't actually do that. But here using Companion, I can. You can actually see set preview input for ME1, camera one, and then set preview input for ME2, camera one. So that means every time I hit that button, it will preview that input in both ME1 and ME2. Now, I know this use case is a little bit specific, but let's look at a different one where I also stack these actions. Over here on this program button, for example, this controls OBS. We hit this button when we actually want to start sending our program feed from our ATEM constellation out to our stream. That goes through our ATEM Mini, but our ATEM Mini is usually playing a video that it's getting fed from OBS. So when I hit this button, I need to switch the ATEM Mini program feed to be my constellation's program feed instead of OBS. And I also wanna stop the OBS video from playing and start it over just so that it's ready the next time. So if I look at the actions that I have, we can see we set the ATEM Mini preview input to ME1 program. Then we perform an auto transition so that it will actually fade that input in rather than just doing a hard cut. And then in OBS, we change scene to a blank scene. So all three of those actions happen as soon as I press that button. Pretty cool, right? The other thing about this is you can actually set delays on things. So for example, if I wanted to pull up a little nameplate for somebody as soon as I switch to a particular input, I could do that. I could turn on a key as soon as I switch that input and then have a delay that turned off the key after say five seconds. Then anytime I switch to that input, it would automatically pull up that key and automatically fade it out without me even having to think about it. I know you can accomplish a lot of these same things using ATEM macros, but one, you have to build them inside of the ATEM software itself. And I just don't think that's a great user interface. You also can't control other devices using those macros. In Companion, I can set up a single button that controls my Constellation, my Mini, and OBS, and whatever other devices I might have connected. It's super powerful and I love it. What do we do next? How do we actually get it onto a Stream Deck and use it? Well, for one, you don't actually need a Stream Deck. You can go over here and click web buttons and it will actually take you to a web page that has all of your buttons for you. So if you have a phone or an iPad or just another computer that's running on the same network as Companion, you can actually navigate to this page here and you can control things just using this. As I click these, you can see it changes. And then, you know, for example, if I do a cut, you can see that happen. And these are responding based on what's actually happening on my ATEM constellation. This means that even without a Stream Deck, you could still actually set up a pretty powerful central hub for controlling all of your production. But I'm assuming you probably want an actual hardware device to control things. So we'll go over here into surfaces. Really, all you need to do is plug in the Stream Deck to the computer that is running Companion. Generally speaking, it automatically recognizes it, but if it doesn't, you can click this rescan USB button and it'll come right in. Once you do that, all of the buttons that you've configured on these pages will show up directly on your Stream Deck, exactly how you programmed them. The other thing is, you can see as you click a button, your Stream Deck responds immediately to exactly what it is you're doing. 
You know how we defined different pages here? Well, we also have buttons up and down that control what page you're actually on. So if we click this up button, you can see it actually changes to reflect what's on page two. So you can set up different pages to actually control the different parts of your stream and your production flow that you need to. The cool thing is you don't even have to use just one stream deck. For example, we have another stream deck that we actually use. This is actually the Stream Deck Mini, and it only has six buttons on it. And that's not going to be great for your actual live stream, but we have an assistant role, and they're in charge of turning the Lyric lower thirds on and off, or actually starting and stopping the stream. And so you can see in here, we actually have a couple different pages defined for it that this one specifically uses. This way, our assistant role only has access to what they actually need access to. You can see these defined on our different pages here. It's really just pages three and four, and just the corner of those. So if we needed to access those on our big stream deck, we still could, but generally speaking, we leave these pages for our assistant role, and they kind of cover it. Something to know about this is you actually set up your specific stream deck for what page it should start on, if you need an offset in the grid, so you want it to be more on the side of the page instead of on the left, what brightness of your stream deck, whether to use the last page at startup, there's all sorts of things you can do here. You may not need more than one stream deck, but it's always cool to know that you can because it makes this endlessly configurable. Another thing to know about Companion is how to actually back up your settings. That way, if your computer dies or is stolen or something like that, you don't lose everything you've built. To do that, we're actually gonna go back to the buttons page and then this import export tab. We'll click on this and then export full configuration. So you actually just download a file that contains the entire configuration. Make sure to store that on a server or a hard drive somewhere. And then if you ever lose your computer, after reinstalling Companion somewhere else, all you need to do is import and bring that file in and it will bring in all your settings. There's so much more that Companion can do and I can't possibly dig into all the features. So just a quick highlight of some of them. You can go in here to triggers and set different ones based on times or other criteria to kick off actions automatically. You've got a settings page that has all sorts of settings based on your internet connection or other configuration options that you might wanna set up. There's a Facebook and a Slack chat, a way to donate in case you want to support the developers who are creating this. Really, Companion is such a powerful piece of software, and the end of it is really just whatever you can do. We've been using Companion for a while now, and honestly, I can't be happier about how it works. It's been flawless for us, has not had any problems, and just allows me to do so much just from one central location. There is no better way to control a live stream on a budget than using Companion set up with a Stream Deck. If this video helped you out and you're excited about integrating Companion into your live stream, how about becoming my companion and subscribing and liking the video? Or leave a comment if you're interested in this and maybe you have questions setting it up or just wanna say, hey, we're using it and it's been awesome. I love hearing from you all on how you're integrating this stuff into your production flows. Be sure to check out my other videos on other ways that you can improve your live stream on a budget. Until next time.